So it's time to have a look at gradients. What information does the onboard need? Well, let's start with actually the basic question. Why does it need the information? Well, if you have brakes on a train, their effectiveness is decreased when the train is going downhill. The braking distance will increase. And similarly, the brakes are more effective when you're going uphill and you'll stop in a shorter distance. So gravity is combined with the brake system force, and that generates the overall deceleration. The ECCS on board needs to know what a deceleration can be expected from the train. The problem is that railways don't change gradient at uh, set points. They change gently and, and in nice vertical curves. ETCS, however, needs to have values. All computer systems need to have a, a set of values that they can work from. So let's take a typical gradient. Yes, I know it's exaggerated, but for the sake of this exercise, we can um, convert the curves into a series of straight line gradients, as many or as few as we need, to reflect the curvature and make sure we reflect the overall gradient. Each of those gradients can be allocated a number representing the slope of the curve, how quickly it rises or falls. And it's those numbers that we can use to create a gradient profile that ETCS can calculate how fast the train will stop from. Each section of it has a length, that length and the gradient that it applies to gives us the information the train will need. All of that is transmitted in a packet and in ETCS that is packet 21. Packet 21 allows for one gradient either uphill and downhill and then a number of further gradient segments again up or down with a gradient and the length of each can be determined. When we're doing the gradient data for ETCS, we have to be conservative. We have to remember the onboard is going to use this to calculate how fast the train is expected to break, potentially in an emergency. So if we don't tell it it's going downhill as much as the actual gradient, then the calculation will be wrong. And in the worst case, what could happen? Well, the train might exceed the end of authority or supervised location because although the driver is braking correctly, the calculations were wrong and he was or she were guided to brake too late. Or we might not obey all of the speed restrictions on the route because the train is not supervised to slow in time. So how do we assign the segments? Well, one of the problems is that there are only a restricted number of segments that we can transmit to the onboard and that it will store. That means that we have to do some approximation. That will reduce the number of segments, but if we're not careful, we might find that it results in something that is not suitable for the safe management of the train. So it needs to result in more down or less up. That makes sense. So that the calculation of the acceleration rate is always on the right side. <clears throat> Where there are a lot of gradient changes on a route, then we may need to approximate over quite long distances. But that has an interesting problem. If we go through a dip, short dip in the gradient, then the display on the DMI to the driver could show that the train is meant to be going uphill when it's very obviously looking out the window going downhill. So whilst it might still give us a safe answer overall, if there happened to be a temporary speed restriction in that section of downhill, then the calculations could be wrong. So where can we get some help? Well, there is a website, ertms.be, which is the ERTMS user group. And if you look on the engineering support section on there, you'll find a list of guidelines which have been published to help people apply ETCS. And number 28 is gradient segmentation. I suggest you have a read.